Everyone ready? Yes, sir. Continue. So now we will see how we are doing operations with the inert gas. So we saw all the alarms, uh, oxygen sensor, level sensor, power supply sensors of all the inert gas system and inert gas line. So if the deck seal fails, scrubber water fails, anything fails, PV breaker water fails, system fails, pressure is low, temperature of the fans are high, everything, we will get an alarm and sensor. And uh, if uh, there are some alarms which will close the inert gas, like if the blower fans are not working, the temperature is high, so that will close the portfolio inert gas plant, everything will be closed. So first thing is in operation, since we are going to start inert gas, we have to give plenty of notice to the engine room because they have to take sufficient load on the boiler, they have to start the generator, all those things. So uh, then you have to, we have to run the inert gas for some time because initially as we saw the oxygen will be more. So some slices, one hour, two hour, depending on the ship, you have to give the notice to the engine room. You remember anyone how much notice, how much time notice you are giving to engine room? And they have to also make sure that suit is not generated. Sham? Yes, sir. How much notice you are giving to engine room? I think, sir, 30 minutes. Can not confirm. Now, uh, then also we need to check this oxygen analysis analyzer is working properly or not. So we will blow with uh, atmospheric air and we will see it's showing 21% oxygen. That means oxygen analyzer is working properly. If it is not, then we have to calibrate it. So before every use, we have to check the oxygen analyzer and calibrate it and then lock it again. Then we have to check the alarm also if it is going in negative, uh, less than that. Uh, when you're taking vacuum, so it should show less oxygen also. Then from the CCR, uh, from the engine control room, you check all the panels and walls pressure while you start the boiler that inert gas pressure is uh, sufficient pressure is available for the inert gas. You can see here around two bar is there. Then the gas is coming out from this. So we have a pressure sensor in the recirculation line also, we saw already. So if the pressure is less or oxygen is more than 58%, the gas will recirculate. Then uh, before starting as we saw, they will check the temperature of the scrubber. It's able to cool the gas. It's not very hot because too much hot gas in the tank also will, it can cause fire. One minute, I will just mute all. Then they must be checked that uh, they are running all the floor fans. You can check that they are cool and smooth. You are not having any erratic sound. The motors are, uh, what you call, there's not much vibration and uh, the temperature is not too much. And the trips that uh, in case there is a uh, lot of pressure or running long time the trips are okay they will shut down so the trip of fans you have to see then the deck seal you have to see they are fully operational the water level is correct you have inspection glass to see if there is a, no lot of soot water level is okay there's no fire the gas is not going back all those things then we have the pv breaker also you see a lot of height so again pv breaker water level you have to check with the gauge glass uh, glass water gauge glass then uh, if you are going in cold condition we can put a glycol what you call to it's an antifreeze it will not allow the water to freeze because we want the water to remain liquid 
so as per the density of the glycol we will put the uh, this thing glycol in the water in the deck seal or in the pv breaker so these are the standby and shutdown so we will have an inert gas uh, plan inerting plan and it will be written that uh, when will you start and how to shut down systematic shutdown procedure we are when you are doing inerting when you are doing gas freeing so again the scrubber rounds we are checking scrubber water should not be run out so at least one hour before you have to make sure that before starting one hour water is already running and all the previous residues are washed out because as in scrubber it is cleaning so all the residue of previous car gas will be there and if, if you don't flush it out then all the soot you can see is so black and dark so all this soot will go into the tank so we will check and uh, do the proper maintenance of the scrubber cleaning and everything and uh, before starting we make sure that at least one hour before we start and flush out all the previous residues and dirt impurities then you will check the lines uh, pressure check that lines are okay there's no leak and uh, Uh, also your pv valves should be checked that they are working properly they can be lifted they are free the vacuum side and the pressure side and maintenance is done all for all the equipment so all these checks uh, now we are going in, this part is about the operations of the ig system so first we prepared the ig system giving notice and checked all the lines and all now we will see once we have started what all we are seeing so this charging is going on and uh, generally during once the tanks are almost halfway through half of the time we are doing discharging and uh, at the same time we are doing inerting also and sometimes we are doing crude oil washing also so this is the mass riser this is the final venting if first the vent first venting system is your pv valve if not then pv breaker and last is masterizer but masterizer is manual so if all both these systems are not working you can release the vapor through masterizer but nowadays generally we have vapor return system that we will see So generally, all these valves, PV valves, masterizer, PV breaker should be in closed position. Or means they should not be lifted, and uh, their pressure rating should be checked as per the PMS yearly or something that they are lifting on the correct pressure. I am muting all, and uh, you unmute only when it is required. So tank PV walls are designed to deal with this uh, atmosphere. So there is a designated pressure, as we saw, uh, two thousand five hundred or eighteen hundred as per the design. They are keeping the designated pressure for PV breaker, and as per that, plus minus ten percent, you will have the uh, alarm settings in the CCR. so if you are going in cold condition the pressure will uh, fall and you have to make sure that you keep monitoring the ig pressure at all time if it is too low then ig system will shut down and then discharging will be affected the uh, tank can become vacuum so especially in discharging you have to make sure that ig system is running correctly all the time otherwise it will cause delay in the port and then it will be a uh, lot of money claims from the this thing so before discharging begins we will check everything and keep the all the inert gas plant ready so now all the checks we have done now we are going to start the inert gas so first we will start in recirculation and again uh, we will check the oxygen and temperature content and this is the panel in the ship's office in the computer will check 
set the pressure. Initially, pressure will be set in low. Then deck delivery wall and uh, the oxygen and temperature contents is been monitored. You can see temperature is quite low, around 20 degrees centigrade, and oxygen is also less than 5%. Now, once before starting, as you as soon as you reach the port, there will be a shore person, surveyor or safety inspector or somebody, shore representative, port inspector, safety inspector, they will come on board to check that you have a proper uh, discharging plan, uh, crude oil washing plan and inerting plan. I have all checks are done, all paperwork and all procedures, this, all is there, blasting, deblasting plan is proper, all stresses are okay. Then he will go and take a round on the deck as required and check if everything is okay. Then uh, once the chief officer starts the IG, he will send somebody on deck to see that there is no leakage or uh, no problems. So they are checking that uh, in, he will monitor from the CCR that tanks are receiving the inert gas and the deck person will see that there is no leakage, the pressure in the lines is okay each tank pressure is okay. IG is not going into the wrong tank, it's going into the correct tank. And there are no alarms, nothing. And discharging is also going on the same time. Now we have to also keep monitoring the oxygen level of each tank also because uh, if the oxygen is high then the discharge is not permitted and uh, then the ig system will also shut down so oxygen level is monitored from the ccr also and from each tank also and now you will see there are different pockets like from where you are doing sampling or and all there from there also if open loading is allowed there also we can check and the vacuum side means minimum pressure should be 100 milliliters of water gauge this is a very important thing keep in mind so high pressure is around 1800 or 2000 millimeter water gauge and minimum is 100 mm of water gauge because we want to keep positive atmosphere. We don't want the air to enter any time and not create any flammable atmosphere. So minimum pressure in the tank should be at least 100 mm of water gauge and maximum as per the design 1800 or 2000. Now uh, discharging is finished. We have closed the inert gas. We want to close the inert gas plant and we will go for a ballast voyage. We don't need inert gas in the ballast voyage. So we'll keep closing everything. Now, if we want to go in the tank, uh, already the tank is inerted, we will measure all the gas and all. And when the hydrocarbon level is below 1% or this below LEL, then we can start putting the ventilation or gas freeing or putting the air dilution with air. So you can see oxygen is 21% and we'll also check hydrocarbon as we check, which is less than LEL. Then we can, uh, as by taking all the inflow space entry procedures, we can go in the, and hydrosulfide, hydrogen sulfide also we have to check because many gases, many crude oils are containing hydrogen sulfide also. And uh, any other gas is uh, mentioned in the MSDS. So this is the Draeger tube. Uh, it's mentioned that we have to check benzene for this gas. So this will study separately in the gas meters, but uh, here you can see that they are using Draeger tube to check benzene. So this is the two methods of gas freeing. One is dilution and displacement, as you can see. So the gas is entering from here and So it will be given in the inert gas plant. You have to do dilution, inert gas manual. It will be there on all the ships. 
and you can see if you have to do this dilution or displacement when you are doing gas mixing as per the density of the air. So dilution means mixing and displacement means uh, if the inert gas is heavy, it will displace the gas inside the tank. So you can see here that uh, the gas air is entering from here and it is passing from here. Same. So this is the air is entering and it is displacing the air inside the inert gas inside the tank. So your ship's manual will tell you which system your ship is designed for dilution or displacement. That means where the lines are passing. And as per that, uh, so in dilution, you can see here, the gas is mixed thoroughly. So you have to, uh, for dilution, you have, because the gas is mixing, so you have to do three times the exchange. With displacement, one time of the volume or timing, you can do. So you have the oxygen sensor here, and uh, when we are putting the air in the dilution method, we'll keep checking the oxygen. When the oxygen is coming more than 21%, that then we can stop the gas freeing or we can stop putting the ventilation air in the tank. Because uh, slow in dilution, the replacement is slow. In displacement is fast, so low velocity of air is put into the tank, but still we need to monitor the oxygen. But you see here it's going very fast because the air is replacing the air inside the tank. So sudden oxygen level is changing. So now our tanks are ready for gas spring. Oxygen, hydrocarbon, H2S all checked, all precautions taken, checklist filled. And we can go in the tank and we can uh, do the repair or inspection. So in dry dock, there is a raft inspection in five years. They put water in the tank and check all the tank sides with raft, any cracks, corrosion, plate thickness, all these things will be checked in the tank. So it's all uh, guidelines are given in ISCOT manual. ISCOT is the Bible of tankers and it is by all the OCIMF oil owners, oil companies, International Marine Forum. Oil owners have found this association. Now inspection is done, everything is done. Uh, repair is done. Now again, we will put inert gas in the tank. So uh, you can see oxygen is low and tank are full of inert gas. So again, we check the oxygen readings and we have to prepare the tanks for loading so inert gas is there and oxygen is below eight percent for old ships for new ships less than five percent so you fill the inert gas oxygen is less than five percent and now uh, tank is ready for loading go to the terminal and you can start loading but still keep monitoring the oxygen and pressure and line leakages all the checks which we do Maintenance of all this. The inner gas system uh, is the fundamental for safety of the gas tankers. Because without inner gas, you can see there will be always explosion, chances of explosion can be there. Now let's see uh, inert gas generator. Yes, any doubts? Uh, sir? Yes. Sir, the displacement or dilution method is that you can use both inert gas in the tank. No, displacement dilution method is for uh, gas freeing, putting air in the tank. When the uh, gas tank is already inerted, we are putting the air to replace the inert gas before man entry. So 
So if your connection okay. pipeline is for putting the air from the bottom, then it will be uh, what you call displacement method. The air is entering from bottom and displacing the inert gas from the top. Uh, so dono mein air pulse pipe ke through gas matlab bahar nikalta hai. Yeah, there is no other way. No, I, you have pulse pipe and you can open all other openings also like tank dome or something. Depends your. Uh, to go from pulse, uh, remove from pulse by the quality of will not come directly for uh, on to human will not well, human level, level. But uh, sometimes after uh, some times of uh, ventilation, once the gas is below LEL or something, it's not dangerous. You can open all other openings and uh, gas spring will be better. Yes. Okay. So this was the inert gas uh, plant. Now we are going to see inert gas generator. So it, both are almost uh, uh, same and same working, but only difference is why we need inert gas generator because we need more pure inert gas, less percentage of oxygen and more pure, less impurity. So more pure inert gas uh, it can be generated from inert gas generator. So let's see how we generate and then I will explain to you that, uh, how is it possible. So inert gas generators are there on chemical tankers also when I was there again. Uh, we had nitrogen generator, sometimes we have inert gas generator because we need uh, inert gas in chemical tankers or product tankers. But we need pure because uh, these chemicals are more expensive and pure. Like you hear the thing about gas clean or something. The more purer chemical, the more purer gas you need to accurate like chemical, otherwise the cargo will become impure. So same thing, this plant is there, uh, inert gas generator is there in the engine room. So this is a separate unit, it's not connected to the boiler. And then so uh, Again, it is same like a boil, separate, you can say separate boiler generator where you have a, a inner gas generator and the gas will go from here, no need of trouble, it will go to the fan and then exit and to the fan. So, uh, let's see how it works. Same like a boiler, you have, uh, you will put air and fuel and spark or ignition and there will be burning. But uh, boiler, we are using that heat for putting the steam also, here we are not doing. So this is the fuel pump for putting the fuel in the IV generator. So they will, we can control the pressure of the fuel as per, because if uh, air fuel ratio is good, then proper burning is taking place and there will be no carbon. So IV generator, the main thing is they are burning the air fuel 100%. So, uh, inner gas is quite pure and oxygen is also very, very low. So, you have the blower fan for design capacity as we told, 1.25% times the largest cargo tank capacity. So, this IG generator is connected from the Generator to the fan. The main thing is uh, controlling the air fuel ratio to get a good uh, quality of air. So let's see how this uh, we are generating. So air is entering from here, in the generator. And fuel pump we already saw. Then you have a pilot burner. Pilot burner means like you have a lighter at home to start the flame in the uh, gas. Pilot burner, you put the lighter and then the main burner will start. So air is coming, fuel is coming, and uh, so fire is coming. and uh, controlling the air fuel ratio by checking the pressure of the gas and oxygen content. We can keep controlling the air fuel ratio. 
and the gas which is generated in the exhaust is inert gas and we will use it for putting it in the tank. So there is hardly any carbon monoxide or carbon or any other impurities or sulfur because we are burning the gas very nicely. But it has to be cooled because of course it's burning at those high temperatures. So there will be the gas will be hot. So we have the rubber where it is cool. This from um, tank temperature or sorry, the water temperature. <coughs> For same, we have uh, the alarms and same thing for scrubber, water level, oxygen level in the system, and power supply, and in uh, protecting water level, pressure of the system in a dead time. We use all the checks here also again. Scrubber is very hot for fans. This is called, uh, there are three types of deck water seal, dry type, semi-dry and wet type. This is, uh, you can see the air is going through the water, so it is called uh, wet type, this is wet type deck seal. Air is always passing through water, but this is uh, not that much used because uh, there is a lot of moisture coming in the tank. So mostly we are using semi-dry type which we will see. Then the gas will go into the tank and finally if there is high pressure it will be released from TV breaker. So you will be asked uh, difference between TV breaker and TV wall and what are the different things? Hmm? So PV breaker is in the common line of inert gas and PV wall is for each tank. And then you can see PV breaker has a higher pressure setting. First, the gas will be released from PV wall, which is low. And then if it is not released from PV wall, then it will be released from PV breaker. And then PV breaker is full of water. PV wall is not full of water. So looking at the pressure. Any doubts? Is me deck water slutter ne rata? Not gas. Me not gas fan ne rata. Your voice is breaking. Which of the camera? Kuchh na jo inert gas fan is me ne rata. Inert gas plant ne rata. If you have the IGS system. Generally, as a way, the IVA system has a plant. 
कुछ शिफ्ट होते हैं सम नाइट्रोजन जनरेटर तो नाइट्रोजन इज मोर प्योर इनर्ट गैस एक लाइटर के बारे में बोलो थे लाइटर जलाने के लिए यूज़ होता है वो हमेशा चलते रहता केवल स्टार्टिंग में जलता है तो लाइटर स्टार्टिंग में देन पायलट बढ़ना मेन बढ़ना जैसे लाइटर को तुमने गैस जला दिया तो देन लाइटर यू डोंट नीड द गैस इज बर्निंग इन द होम सेम वे द पायलट बर्नर गैस विल कीप बर्निंग द स्पार्क एंड देन वी डोंट नीड टू वो कैसे काम करता है इलेक्ट्रिकल लाइटर रहता है क्या हाँ इलेक्ट्रिकल या मैकेटर में रहता है सर जो मोटरसाइकिल में जो रहता है उसका वो दस पार्क प्लग दस पार्क प्लग जैसा रहता है कैसा रहता है स्पार्क प्लग होता है ना मोटर साइकिल में हां जैसे स्पार्क प्लग होता है उस टाइप का रहता है इलेक्ट्रिकल इलेक्ट्रिकल स्पार्क से जनरेट करता है सो दिस इज द नाइट्रोजन जनरेटर सो दिस इज व्हाट वी हैव इट इज अ बिग एयर कंप्रेसर है एयर को कंप्रेस करके फिल्टर करके नाइट्रोजन गैस 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 होता है almost 0.12% oxygen or 0.5% oxygen and there is no other impurities in inert gas generator also chances of impurities are there because we are burning fuel here we are taking the air and compressing it and removing the oxygen so there is no chance of entering any carbon or okay clear so the, we have a big compressor is putting the air into the filter and this filter is taking out oxygen from the compressed gas so we have three micron filters mic micron and sub micron filter and activated carbon filter so they will remove the all the impurities and the oxygen from the system then the air is collected here and uh, then we have our absorber where it will absorb any other impurities in this lab again we have one more air filter you see so many filters are there to remove the impurities and then you have the flow meter to check the pressure of uh, air in the nitrogen and then the nitrogen is collected in the nitrogen meter and from here how much nitrogen you want it is in the put in the tank so of course because it is uh, such a big system so nitrogen generators are very small and they are very expensive and they are used for very expensive and sensitive cargo because there are some cargo which are water sensitive and uh, can contaminate with impurities so if the cargo is getting uh, contaminated with the impurities or they are getting uh, If the cargo is contaminated because of impurities, or they are getting contaminated or spoiled because of the water, because all the systems we saw, inert gas system or inert gas generator, 
the air is gas is passing through scrubber and water is there but some cargoes get damaged because of water <coughs> we need nitrogen in that case like hexene or uh, isocyanide or some cargo not with water at all so there we are using nitrogen now some cargoes are uh, more sensitive than this also so then we don't use this nitrogen from the nitrogen generator we get a special nitrogen or special inert gas from the shore they supply in the gas water and as per the cargo which type of gas we require that we have to see so you can see this uh, gas is coming out of the Mm, generator, compressor, and you have the. This air is coming, so air contains nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide, moisture, and other gases. So, with dust particles, oil, everything is there. So, this gas, all this needs to be all this. We need only pure nitrogen, and all other things have to be removed. So here it will check and remove all the impurities. Then you have three mic micron size orange color dust particle will be absorbed in the pre filter. So the first thing will be absorbed dust will be absorbed in this type of filter. Like you are putting a mask which is filtering the dust. Same way. This mask filter is removing the dust, and water is also drained because of this effect, removing the gas in this filter. Then the gas is passed to the air dryer. So any other moisture which is remaining will be removed in the air dryer. And Gas will also little bit cool down because it is compressed, so it will be still hot. Then the dry air is coming out, and then we have the filters, micron and sub-micron filters. You can see this type of filters like you have in your aqua guard system. They are very micron size. So first one is filtering again the dust. So green color is nitrogen, and then red and orange color is impurities and oxygen. So other gray color dust particles and uh, other things, other gases are absorbed. And then. Have the carbon filter, all the carbon and all activated carbon absorbing all other impurities. And finally, the air is free of dust and oil and contains uh, So normally this air is containing 78% nitrogen which is air air and 21% oxygen and 1% of other gases and then there will be a big filter to remove the oxygen. Now our gas is free from oil, water and dust. Now it will go to the main filter to remove the oxygen. So you can see the gas is passing here. So this is absorption chamber, oxygen absorption chamber. You have two stages of absorbing oxygen, stage one, tower one and tower two. So here the oxygen is absorbed and uh, again it is passed through here. So you have some silica gel also 
to remove the any remaining moisture. You see all oxygen is red particles are collected here. And the nitrogen is collected in the nitrogen tank. So here it will check if the gas is uh, not pure, still oxygen is there. From here it will go here and still if it is oxygen, it will go here. The gas will keep circulating and keep absorbing the oxygen till the time it is pure nitrogen. And when the gas which has pure nitrogen, it will be going from the other line and uh, from here and collected in the tank. So here is the recirculation wall. If it is Having pure nitrogen, it will go into the nitrogen tank. If it is not pure nitrogen, it will go into the again absorber and go again here. Again, that will be checked and keep absorbing. The cycle will keep running. Few times, sir. Okay, any doubt till now? No, sir. So, our uh, inert gas plant is complete. Inert gas. System, inert gas generator, nitrogen generator, and its main functioning and everything is over. And then finally, when the nitrogen is going into the tank, before that also, if any water is or dust is there, it is again filtered. And we check the flow is proper and then we put it into the tank. Okay. So again I'm closing the meeting and log in after 15 minutes.